The following program, The Russ Belleville Show, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on The Russ Belleville Show are their own and the Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. And it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! From the promise of legalization. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Rough Bellville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. Now, here's your host, Radical Russ Belleville. We love it. All right, good day, tokers and togets, and welcome. It is Wednesday, April 17th, 2013, and it's got to be 420 summer in the world, and it's got to be 420 this weekend. Oh, my God, we're so excited. We are headed to Denver for the High Times Cannabis Cup, the first cannabis cup in america not a medical cannabis cup there's been a few of those and we've brought you coverage of those but the first cannabis cup where all adults age 21 and older can fully partake in the festivities it's going to be exciting i'm there on a special panel on sunday at 1 30 with uh, hail mary jane bianca barnhill uh coral reefer paul token uh, we're all talking about social media and internet uh, media so i hope if you're there at the cup you get a chance to check out that panel Otherwise, we'll have it recorded and bring it to you next week right here on the Russ Belleville Show. We're going to bring you live streaming co coverage from Denver, uh, audio at least, and we'll bring you as much video as the bandwidth will allow starting Saturday noon mountain time. So check that out right here at 420radio.org. we got all sorts of excellent stuff on today's show. First of all, it is Wednesday, so we will have our cannabis Q&A with Dr. Mitch Earlywine. Get your questions ready on cannabis science, culture, history, and health. Uh, Dr. Mitch will answer them live at the bottom of the hour. Then at 45 past the hour, we got a reschedule interview from about a week ago. John Payne from Show Me Cannabis Regulation in Missouri is going to join us. He's going to tell us all about the latest poll numbers that show a surprising amount of support for marijuana legalization in that southern state and some movement in St. Louis, Missouri for decriminalization that we need to talk about. Also, we are going to take a look uh, at behind the headlines on today's show at Illinois, which has just passed a medical marijuana bill out of its House of Representatives. We're going to take a look deep into that bill and show you what, what makes it one of the most restrictive medical marijuana measures in the nation. It's also Daily Toker Tunes today. Today is Irie Wednesday, but uh, Brian the Red gets a little break because we've got Cheech and Chong. That's right. All week this week, we're debuting new music from Cheech and Chong off the Cheech and Chong animated movie musical soundtrack album. The animated movie premieres tonight at the Roxy in Hollywood. Today, for our Daily Toker Tunes, we're going to bring you Paranoid Pothead. But don't worry if you're looking for some Roots Reggae tonight at 8 o'clock Pacific Time. we got Red Eye's Reggae Flashback. You'll get all the real Roots rhythms and the B-sides and all the cool stuff. So check that out. A lot of rare, unreleased, out-of-print reggae. So much stuff to get to. We start with our 420 Radio News headlines coming up next. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. 
Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. This is your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, April 17th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Illinois House passes medical marijuana bill from ChicagoTribune.com. The Illinois House today approved a measure to let people use marijuana for medical purposes, giving the proposal its best chance of becoming law in recent years. The House sent the bill to the Senate on a 61 to 57 vote. The Senate previously has passed similar legislation. Proponents say the legislation, which would set up a four-year pilot program, would be the most restrictive in the nation. 17 states and the District of Columbia have approved some form of marijuana use for medicinal purposes. Under this bill, an individual could be prescribed no more than 2.5 ounces of marijuana during a two-week period. A doctor who prescribes marijuana must have had a prior and ongoing relationship with the patient, a move to lessen the chance that doctors could give out the prescription willy-nilly. Backers of legalizing recreational marijuana use in Alaska want 2014 vote from ADN.com. Alaska voters may get the chance next year to make their state the third in the country to approve the recreational use of marijuana by adults 21 and older. Backers of the move on Tuesday took the first step toward getting the measure on the August 2014 primary ballot. Three prime sponsors of the effort filed their application for an initiative petition. The measure would tax and regulate marijuana sales and allow Alaskans to cultivate marijuana for personal use. Alaskans age 21 and older could legally possess up to one ounce of marijuana under the proposal or six marijuana plants, three of which could be mature. The Marijuana Policy Project is working with the local committee. Police bust art gallery that offered free marijuana for donations from CBS Denver. Denver police have busted organizers of a marijuana club operating out of an art gallery. The organizers offered free pot in exchange for donations to the gallery. Adam Zimmerly and Devin Hawk Hazard now face felony charges for distribution of marijuana. The 530 gallery had been running an ad on Craigslist which offered, quote, high-grade marijuana free with a donation to the gallery, end quote. Denver police were conducting an undercover investigation of the gallery and its club. Vice and narcotics officers received hundreds of dollars of pot with marked money put into a jar marked donations. Zimmerly said the money was absolutely donations to the gallery. State delaying marijuana licenses until December 1st. This from KOMO News. Washington State is delaying its timeline for granting marijuana growing and processing licenses, and that means legal marijuana sales likely won't begin before next spring. Liquor Control Board spokesman Brian Smith says that rather than issue growing licenses this summer and processor licenses this fall, it will issue all licenses December 1st. That means the growers won't be able to get to work until December, and the final product won't be ready for a couple months after that. Smith says the decision will help growers because they'll have a better picture of the business landscape before they begin growing. <laughs> Marijuana policy groups kick off D.C. legalization campaign with Paul from Washington Post. National and local advocates for marijuana policy reform are using a new poll to kick off a major push for the legalization or decriminalization of cannabis in the district, one that could include the pursuit of a ballot initiative in 2014. It showed two-thirds of D.C. registered voters would at least partially support a legalization referendum similar to the ones passed last year in, in Colorado and Washington State. Three-quarters of poll respondents favored the decriminalization approach adopted by several states and municipalities, which would turn the possession of small amounts of marijuana from a criminal offense to something more akin to a traffic ticket. 
Both white and black residents favored Colorado-Washington-style legalization, though by different degrees. 77% to 19% for white residents, 53% to 38% for African Americans. The same goes for the decriminalization question, which was supported by 85% of white residents and 69% of black residents. Information on the poll and its crosstabs are available through links at WashingtonPost.com or visit news.radicalrust.com for all of the links to every headline we ever deliver here on 420 Radio News. This has been your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, April 17th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines and take a look deep into the Illinois House of Representatives bill, House Bill 1, which would be one of the most restrictive medical marijuana measures in the nation if it were to pass. You're listening to the Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. org is listener-supported Cannabis Community Radio, and while we value every $4.20 donation that comes in monthly from our members, we take this moment to offer an extra special thanks to our most generous donors, who have provided over $1,000 worth of support to 420radio.org. For their privacy's sake, we'll identify these knights and dames of the smoky table as... Sir Randy of the Lakes... Dame Kathleen the Beneficent. Dame Kaylee the Wise. Sir Travis of Stumptown. Sir Rolla J of Cush. And others who wish to remain anonymous. Thank you, lords and ladies, for your most generous patronage. Russ Belleville Show. Chat is for friends 18 and older. We expect our chat to be civil, mature, and free from excessive profanity. If you don't like these rules, there are approximately 6 billion other chat rooms with lower standards that you can visit. Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And as we reported, the Illinois House has passed the medical marijuana bill, House Bill 1, uh, with a 61 to 57 vote, sending it to the Senate, which has passed bills like it before. Uh, this bill is exceptionally long. It's 212 pages long. I actually had to read the whole thing uh, in preparing for this little behind the headlines. And uh, fortunately, I've read lots of medical marijuana proposals. So some of it is boilerplate language that I recognize from many other proposals. And uh, the problem that I have with this is, once again, it's leading us into what I call the box canyon of medical marijuana. Uh, there is a quote here. This, first of all, the bill is called the Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis Pilot Program. And that means this program will only last for four years. And in four years, if it's not voted you know, to continue, it will no longer be law. I can think of nothing crueler then allowing patients to be able to find this cannabis medicine and then criminalizing them after four years. You know, you talk about sticking your toe in the water, so to speak. Uh, it's almost, it's almost, it would almost be better if they didn't never had access to it at all. They, at least they wouldn't know what they were missing. Uh, but anyway, this would uh, make them the 19th jurisdiction, you know, 18 states, 18 in D.C., you know, 17 in D.C., uh, to legalize uh, medical marijuana. But like the bills that have all come out since New Jersey, New Jersey, D.C., Delaware, Connecticut, these, these, let, these proposals to legalize medical marijuana keep getting written in a more and more strict fashion to try to keep as many people out of the program as possible, to make qualifying for the program as difficult as possible. And I just wanted to go over some of this. First of all, uh, Dan Riffle, Deputy Director of Marijuana Policy Project, told CBS Chicago, quote, unlike California, you're not going to be able to doctor shop. 
You're not going to be able to walk into an office, pay $100, and leave five minutes later with a recommendation, end quote. Because that would be bad if people got health care on a quick basis, if people that whose doctors would be reluctant to write a recommendation had another option to find, that would be bad. But of course, this has to be written not from a medical perspective. They're always written from a political perspective, and that's the problem of medical marijuana is it puts marijuana in politics where it doesn't belong. It belongs in the hands of doctors and patients. Now, we already mentioned the bill would, uh, qualifying patients would get two and a half ounces every 14 days from a dispensary. You're not allowed to home grow. And you must specify the specific dispensary, one singular. You're not allowed to shop around at different dispensaries. If you want to switch dispensaries, there's a whole bunch of paperwork you have to file to change that. Uh, there, a doctor can grant a waiver if, you th if he thinks you need more than two and a half ounces. Uh, but the qualifying condition list. This is where I think it, things have gone really insane. You're not going to be able to qualify for simple chronic pain or severe nausea in the state of Illinois. You must qualify under one of the following conditions. Cancer, glaucoma, positive status for human immuno immunodeficiency virus, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, hepatitis C, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Crohn's disease, agitation of Alzheimer's disease, cachexia wasting syndrome, muscular dystrophy, severe fibromyalgia, spinal cord disease, including but not limited to arachnoiditis, Tarlov cysts, hydromyelia, syringomyelia, rheumatoid arthritis, fibrous dysplasia, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, and post-concussion syndrome, multiple sclerosis, Arnold Chiari malformation, and Syringiomyelia, spinocerebellar ataxia, Parkinson's, Tourette's, myoclonus, dystonia, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, complex regional pain syndromes type 1, causalgia, complex regional pain syndromes type 2, neurofibromatosis, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, Sjornjens syndrome, lupus, interstitial cystitis, myasthenia gravis, hydrocephalus, nail patella syndrome, residual limb pain, or treatment of those conditions. Simple chronic pain will not do it. Here's some other details of the Illinois bill. Uh, of course, you're not allowed to cultivate your own plants as a patient. You have to register which dispensary you're going to get your cannabis from. Uh, caregivers have to be at least 21 years old, and a caregiver can only assist one patient. So if you're the only son and have two parents that both need a caregiver, I'm afraid you'll have to pick whichever one most needs your help. Uh, caregivers can't have any drug felonies unless it was growing just a small amount of pot for medical use, but you have to prove all of that. Uh, patients cannot use their medical cannabis, quote, knowingly in close physical proximity to anyone under the age of 18 years. So that would include your children. You're not allowed to use your medical cannabis in the close proximity of your children. Uh, they don't exactly define what close proximity is. Doctors can have nothing to do with dispensaries and vice versa, even recommending one another or anything. They can't, you know, doctor can't say, hey, you can go to this dispensary or that dispensary. Uh, dispensaries can't say, yeah, if you need a recommendation, go see this doctor or that doctor. And I can understand why they're doing that. The whole, you want to keep the, the pharmacy separate from the doctor. I get it. Uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, patients are protected from discrimination in organ transplants and child custody. And that's, that's good. We, we want we're wanting to see that in these bills. Uh, patients are somewhat protected from employment, education, and housing for being patients, but their use of medical cannabis can be restricted or denied and employers can still use dirty urine tests to fire patients. Uh, no children can be patients. The department will not issue a registry identification card to anyone under the age of 18. Sorry, Michaela. Sorry, Alex. Police must have 24-hour real-time access to any and all video security at cultivation centers. Cultivation centers must be almost a half mile, 2,500 feet, from schools, daycares, and residential areas. Uh, cultivation centers can only sell to dispensaries. Dispensaries can only buy from cultivation centers. There is no small growers, you know, supplying co-ops or anything like that. 
Uh, dispensaries have to be a thousand feet from schools and daycares, can't be in residential areas. The dispensaries have to keep detailed records of the purchases by the patients to ensure that nobody's getting more than two and a half ounces per fortnight. And police can randomly inspect all of those dispensaries and their records to make sure that that's all being followed. Then, then you can have your medical marijuana in Chicago or Springfield or Peoria. But only if you're chained to a radiator at 2 in the morning. Oh, have you ever met that funny we'll right reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Since medical marijuana became legal in Colorado, Marisol Therapeutics has been one of the most successful dispensaries in the state. Caring for thousands of patients, Marisol produces terrific medicine in their greenhouses and in their outdoor gardens. Here's Michael Stetler, the director of Marisol Therapeutics. Uh, this is our grow. We handle probably over 1,500 patients. We're licensed by the state of Colorado, and we try to do things the proper way. Different patients need different uh, strains for different ailments. It's really hard for us to grow this medicine and have the federal government say this and, and people out there in the everyday life not understand what this medicine's about. God wouldn't give us an herb like this for it to be the devil's plant, what they say, and that's wrong. This is an angel's plant. This is, does good for human beings. It's never killed nobody in its entire existence. It's time that we quit uh, witch hunting this plant and you know we take it into our knowledge and do good like the fathers did, bless this plant and let that plant teach us. That's right, baby. We're keeping the funk alive right here at Big Daddy Fink's Funky Roller Ring, your groovy home of soul, funk, and disco. disco. So join me, Big Daddy, every Thursday night at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, at the Funky Roller Ring, where every night is Saturday night. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Toker Tunes, the best in pod safe 420 music from around the web. Today is Irie Wednesday, featuring reggae, ska, and other world music genres. You can get downloads and more information about all our Daily Toker Tunes by visiting music.radicalrust.com. Now, sit back and enjoy your Daily Toker Tunes. All right, folks, as you know, we've been debuting new music from the Cheech and Chong animated movie musical soundtrack album. I always forget the, all the words in that title. Musical soundtrack album and new songs from Cheech and Chong. There's nine new tracks on this album. It's available already through Amazon and through iTunes. You can check that out. Also, if you go to Spotify, you can get uh, special commentary tracks from Cheech and Chong for each tune uh you know like they have the back tracks on a dvd you know where they explain how, how everything went you know in the recording and the writing and all that you can check that out on spotify it's available get all this information at cheech and chong animated.com or go to facebook.com slash cheech and chong for this information and I, I mentioned yesterday how what i really like about their music you know a little comedy parody type music is that they do it in lots of different genres and it kind of fits what we do with daily toker tunes and today we've got their Irie tune, as, as Irie as Cheech and Chong are going to get. It's called Paranoid Pothead, which actually really isn't an Irie concept at all. But uh, we'll just give them, uh, we'll give them a mulligan on this one. They can go ahead and do Paranoid Pothead. But before we do, I just wanted to kind of make a note of the fact that Tommy Chong is 74 years old. On May 24th of this year, he's going to turn 75. 
75 years. Uh, Cheech Marin is 66 years old. Uh, July 13th, he'll turn 67. And, of course, Willie Nelson, beloved Willie Nelson, is currently 79. On April 30th, he is going two weeks away, Willie Nelson turns 80 years old. I, I sure hope these guys get some help with their terrible marijuana addiction before they ruin the rest of their lives, don't you? Uh, let's to give it off to Cheech and Chong here for Paranoid Pothead. <laughs> Johnny comes around, stealing their treasure away. They stand up for themselves, cause that's the only way they play. One One for the money, money, two for the show. Got three joints, ready to go. Paranoid pothead, pothead, pothead. Paranoid pothead. Shakespearean Theatre. I'm your host, Leonard Pinth Garnell III. Tonight we take a look at one of the finest works in the cannabis cinema, 1996's Half-Baked, starring David Chappelle, as interpreted by the Royal Shakespearean Cannabis Theatre Company. In this scene, Chappelle's character, Thurgood Marshall, has just admitted his addiction to cannabis to a room full of narcotics addicts. One addict, played in the film by Robert Saget, and interpreted here by the Royal Company's Sir Frederick Farrakh, takes umbrage at the suggestion. I find preposterous the notion that you, sir, may be addicted to cannabis. In times previous, I have undertaken lubricious endeavors, most revolting and unbecoming of a proper gentleman, in my servitude to the wicked powder of the coca leaf. Lo, that is an addiction whose chains would bind Hercules. At any point in history, could one identify a moment in your life so sullied by your ignominy as a cannabis slave? Methinks not. Boo this man! 
For Canada Shakespearean Theatre, I'm Leonard Pentagano III. Hey, this is Willie Nelson for Norman. I'm not smoke pot and I like it a lot. I learned a long time ago that marijuana is a lot safer than alcohol. There's nothing wrong with the responsible use of marijuana by adults. It's time we stopped arresting and started respecting those who smoke marijuana responsibly. To learn what you can do to help, contact Normal at NORML.org or call toll free 888-67-NORML. We will return. It's time for the Russ Belleville Show's Cannabis Q&A with Dr. Mitch Earlywine. Dr. Earlywine is a professor of psychology at the State University of New York at Albany and a leading author and researcher on cannabinoids and health who pins the Ask Dr. Mitch column for High Times Magazine. Get your questions ready in our live chat or call in to 971-533-7111 now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Time for our Cannabis Q&A with Dr. Mitch, but unfortunately, I'm having difficulty getting Dr. Mitch on the line with us, and I'm hoping I didn't forget something. If Hello, could, not like, available now. Please not leave. available, yeah. So we will, uh, I'm going to take you to some music here while I try to figure out what's going on. Be right back as soon as possible. Oh, God! Oh, Lyman cannot be afraid. Hence, me mean, I was fun and Solomon grave. <laughs> It's time for the Russ Belleville Show's Cannabis Q&A with Dr. Mitch Earlywine. Dr. Earlywine is a professor of psychology at the State University of New York at Albany and a leading author and researcher on cannabinoids and health who pins the Ask Dr. Mitch column for High Times Magazine. Get your questions ready in our live chat or call in to 971-533-7111 now. All right, welcome everybody. Half past the hour and it's a Wednesday and that means it's time to speak with newly elected normal board member, Dr. Mitch Earlywine. How you doing, Dr. Mitch? Woohoo! how about that? Ah, that's pretty darn cool. I'm pretty delighted. Yeah, yeah. So you're part of the, who who are the other new board members who were elected along with you? Well, so we got Diane Fornbacker, who okay. everyone knows and loves. Mm -hmm. And then I'm afraid the other folks are escaping me right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look it up. Rick, you sick my time. Rick Steves has been, you know, a salient participant already. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, a lot of the usual suspects. Um, oh, the guy from Weed Maps, whose name is Justin I'm Hartfield from Weed Maps, and exactly, and Rick uh, Cusick and from High Times. Two others I can't think of right now. Rick Cusick from I'm High sure. Times. You got it. There we go. I think I think that's all. Judges, did we get them all? Yes, we did get them all. We're all good. Okay. As always, when we start off these discussions, we let Dr. Mitch Earlywine set the table with the latest in cannabis studies, science polls, all that kind of stuff. What's new in the news? New data from the Annals of Epidemiology showing that, what a surprise, medical marijuana states don't have increases 
in teen use. In fact, in this data set, uh, there was a drop of a half of a percent. Oh. And also uh, no uh, oddball changes in attitudes about marijuana's perceived harmfulness. So mm. anybody who thinks medical marijuana is a bad idea has less and less data to stand on. There we go. And speaking of the data, I got a, a note from Paul Armentano, our friend with Normal, uh, and he sent along new research from Hartman and Huestis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Marilyn Huestis' name correctly, but uh, Huestis, perhaps. Uh, That's it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Marilyn Huestis on on the detection. She's a, one of these experts on the whole science of detecting cannabinoids in the blood and whether or not that's going to lead to impairment and the money quote on this was her saying that there is no direct correlation between driving impairment and thc concentration i wonder if you got to look at that and if you have any other gems to mine from it so i saw an abstract from a poster she did on the same uh idea and from that same data set and in fact you know what a surprise people's variation in tolerance is so dramatic that uh, trying to do things in nanograms per milliliter is just a bad idea. I've you know jumped up and down before about how roadside sobriety tests are definitely the way to go because they detect you know Benadryl or any other kind of impairment, not just cannabinoids. And we definitely all know folks who are regular medical users or just regular daily users who have tolerance that's so high that the any level we would set would be ridiculous given their uh, ability to drive uh, after using. So. I really hope that uh, this can help buttress the argument for roadside sobriety tests and not uh, anybody having to give up blood or urine. Yeah, let's hope for that. And uh, Dr. Mitch, there's another topic out there. I, I've seen it uh, pop up in the local news around here in Oregon. Uh, apparently some uh, a, a story of a, of a uh, police being called uh, to, see, to find a woman, a naked 19-year-old woman holding an infant in her arms and swinging a hammer with the other hand, all freaked out and hallucinating. And they're attributing it to this this herb, this uh, this drug called kratom. And I'd never heard of the dang thing, but we talked about it last week, and, and a couple of our Canadian listeners informed us what, what it was. I looked it up. Have you heard much of this kratom, and do you have any uh, information for us on it? So both this one and Damiana were kind of making the rounds for a little while as potential uh, intoxicants or just interesting recreational things. They have a long history, but we just don't have a ton of data on them. Obviously, this uh, woman was in over her head on it, so I, I, I'm reluctant to say much from a single case, though, because she may have had a psychotic disorder before. She could have uh, been, you know, in the middle of some kind of manic episode. It's just too soon to to say that this that this is always harmful or always bad. But obviously, it was not a good time this time. Yeah, how much of that is an effect in this reporting? You know, we get we get these stories a little while back. It was the face eating zombies, right, on the spice or whatever. Uh, we get these stories that are hyped up of people having these huge breaks with reality. It's always attributed to the fact that they're doing some drug. But how much of that is them doing some drug to deal with the fact that they've got such a huge break with reality? Well, and I, and I do feel like these chicken and egg issues never come up. Uh, the fact that uh, some of these folks, when you look deep into their personal histories, had had psychotic breaks before or were uh, at least schizotypal, had kind of a schizophrenia light uh, style of interacting with the earth, uh, is, is something that we ought to keep in mind anytime we see one of these. And uh, as Bruce Merkin of MPP used to say, if it bleeds, it leads. Mm. We always get the dramatic part. We might not have heard of the hundreds and thousands of people who used it without any negative consequences. Of course. All right. We're speaking with Dr. Mitch Earlywine here in our Cannabis Q&A. You can call in live at 971-533-7111 or drop your question into our chat room here on Ustream. Just type slash login to create your account. And we've got a, a question here coming from LCAP in our chat room wants to know if there is a way to purify cannabis resin into something less harmful um not an efficient or simple way um and in fact i mean the resin that you're getting you know just on the side of your pipe probably doesn't have a lot of psychoactive uh thc left in it anyway um, so, I mean, not, not something I'd recommend without some pretty serious, uh, access to, uh, chemical <laughs> equipment. Yeah. Yeah. We so, just no, had sorry. Another... Sorry. Bad news. Yeah. We just had another one of these, uh, you know, blowing up hash, uh, stories out here in Oregon, some 22 year old making butane hash in his, uh, in his house and of course exploded and he goes running down the street. I'm burned. I'm burned. Uh, so we're hearing more and more of that. And I, I keep wondering. 
you know, in a legal uh, scenario, isn't isn't what they do in most pharmaceutical factories basically that stripping from plants and other substances their essential oils and making them into pills? Uh, alas, uh, only a small percentage now do that. We've got come to the point now where almost uh, at least the top ten sellers are all pretty much synthetic. Oh, so it's just turning one chemical into another chemical. I'm afraid it's nowhere near as natural as it was even 60 years ago. Wow. Okay. Well, certainly under legalization, we could have some sort of regulated industrial production of these things. It'd be a whole lot safer. And in fact, I think uh, the the idea that we even need to move away from whole plant is certainly worth debating. Ah, yes. Many rants on that subject. Uh, Normal Patriot in our chat room has a question. How hard would it be for us to self-monitor like with a test strip? And I think it would say like, uh, you know, with blood alcohol, there's there's that little chart they give you as far as you know when you're too drunk to drive, or there's all sorts of little... Is there anything like that coming on the horizon for us consumers so that we can know if we're above five nanograms? Well, so, I mean, if you want a kind of instantaneous behavioral measure that seems to co-vary with driving impairment, uh, go ahead and uh, stand on one foot, stick the other foot about... Oh, 18 inches up in the air, hold your arms out and uh, see if you can <laughs> hold it like that for about 30 seconds without uh, tipping or swaying too badly. And that would certainly be a good marker as, as far as, you know, just general motor skills are, are concerned. But I want to encourage folks to just say, hey, you know, maybe tonight's not the night for me to drive anyway. Why don't I arrange things so that everybody comes to my house or uh, that I can walk to the place I want to go or let's do public transit or in a lot of towns. You know, a cab might be four to eight bucks. I can get an awful lot of places in Portland for two dollars and fifty cents, you know, so let's let's take advantage of that. You know, that's uh, interesting. You mentioned that uh, it seems odd to me that we're so frightened about how adults may or may not smoke pot and then drive. Yet every bar I drive by has a parking lot. They basically are assuming someone's going to drive there for the purposes of drinking alcohol. And, well, we're going to give them at least a a little bit of leeway in determining their own responsibility to get behind the wheel. Just seems like a strange double standard, isn't it? Maybe we could extend the same the same courtesy to cannabis. I like that yeah, idea. That would be very nice. All right, we have a question from John Thomas who wants to know, uh, I seem to find a potency variance in any given strain, from dispensary to dispensary, even from one month to the next. How can we get standardized effects for each strain? Well, I, I do want to... Um sort of play up the idea that, you know, we're within a certain range here, and particularly because, you know, if you're vaporizing, you can monitor your dose to some pretty precise uh, inhalation sizes that you don't want to drive yourself too nuts. What we are seeing is folks who can grow indoors under really standardized conditions can replicate uh, both THC and cannabidiol concentrations using the same strain in the same medium with uh, almost identical lighting. But again, don't don't make too much of this. I feel like uh, one one vaporizer hit versus one and a half is is not something that you should spend too much time driving yourself crazy about. Uh, well, what I was going to say also was that uh, he was saying dispensary to dispensary. Uh, a lot of times, even the same strain grown from the same seed or even off the same mother plant can have different uh, concentrations based on the chemical contents that they use for their nutrients uh, solutions and also what kind of growing medium that they have. Uh, Also the lights make a a big difference, you know, whether it's indoor or outdoor makes a difference. Um, You know, these are all factors. So if you want to get a consistent, you know, uh, effect, I would just say try and get as large of a... All right, that of course is a pre-recorded interview with uh, Dr. Mitch. We were unable to get him on the line, but coming back, from this break, we will have John Payne on the line from Show Me Cannabis Regulation. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be talking about the state of Missouri and the city of St. Louis, some recent polling, and uh, any moves for initiatives in 2014 or 2016. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. 
Have you considered medical marijuana? Double-blind, peer-reviewed studies have found cannabinoid therapies to be successful in treating the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, brain cancer, chronic pain, diabetes mellitus, dystonia, fibromyalgia, GI disorders, hepatitis C, HIV AIDS, hypertension, incontinence, MRSA, multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis, pruritus, rheumatoid arthritis, sleep apnea, and Tourette's syndrome as well as anecdotal evidence in suggesting relief from anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress, plus reduction in the need for narcotic painkillers. Side effects from medical marijuana can include euphoria, relaxation, anxiety, panic reaction, paranoia, tachycardia, dry eyes, dry mouth, concentration, and reaction time impairments, appetite increase, and in some U.S. states, arrest and incarceration. But medical marijuana is non-toxic and cannot cause overdose. Medical marijuana, it's not for everyone, but ask your doctor if medical marijuana may be right for you. Hey man, am I driving okay? The Russ Belleville Show reminds you to never smoke and drive impaired. Hang out for a while. Share. I think we're parked. Take a little trip, take a little trip, take a little trip to see. Activism begins with ACT. The Rush Belleville Show features the stories of hardworking grassroots activists working for an end to prohibition in today's activist agenda. Welcome back, everyone. 46 after the hour. And joining us by telephone from the great state of Missouri, we have John Payne from Show Me Cannabis Regulation. John, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Russ. Good to be here. Oh, there's so much news to cover in Missouri. I know there's a poll. I was reading some stuff out of St. Louis, and I know you guys have initiatives and events coming up. Let's start with the poll that just recently came out in the state of Missouri showing uh, support for marijuana legalization. What can you tell us about that? Oh, uh, yeah. So we, we commissioned a poll a while back. Well, actually, uh, uh, the National Cannabis Coalition, in support of us, commissioned a poll, uh, and they looked at likely 2014 voters and we found that uh, just over 50% of likely 2014 voters in Missouri support legalization and regulation of marijuana-like alcohol, uh, with about, I think it was 40, 42% against, and then, uh, or 45% against, and 5% undecided. Uh, and then if you uh, gave them more information, both opposing and uh, supporting statements, uh, the support increased to 54% uh, wow. with the opposition staying the same. So it looks like when people know more about it, they are, uh, they're more likely to support it, which sure comes as a surprise to us. Yeah, well, it surprises me. You guys are getting better polling numbers than we're getting out here in a recent poll in Oregon that only showed 50% support. Uh, you know, when we get these polls, usually there's a breakdown between men and women's support. You know, women usually are 9 to 10 points behind. Uh, sometimes there's breakdowns between Republicans versus Democrats or old versus young. How did that break down in this poll? Uh, yeah, women are uh, definitely not quite as much, not quite as supportive. Uh, I don't remember exactly the, the breakdown there, but I don't think it was a full. It was nine points. That would uh, be a pretty big gap. I think it was like five points, oh, okay. uh, with men being about fifty-five, and well, maybe it was uh, men being I think about fifty-five, and women being something like forty-eight uh, in support. Uh, and then, yes, uh, Democrats were far more likely to favor it than Republicans, but still. Uh, yeah, about 60% of Democrats you still had about a little over a third of Republicans favoring it, though, which, I mean, if you're talking about a uh, an election, you know, certainly that's not a good number, uh, just one-third, but, you know, it still means one out of every three people who identify as a Republican support it, and those are definitely, you know, if we can improve our numbers there, uh, that's, that's important in a state like Missouri, which uh, does lean right a bit, so it's, uh, it's good to have uh, have some solid support among Republicans as well as Democrats and independents. What are your plans with Show Me Cannabis regulation to boost support among women and Republicans and older voters? Well, we're uh, actually pretty close to launching a media campaign. Uh, we're going to be using, you know, a, uh, a nice uh, female uh, person to talk uh, in, in, the, uh, in the ad, get a uh, sort of a, a motherly uh, kind of voice there, because uh, that's... Uh, People, you know, are, are more likely to support someone they identify with. So if you have that, that's uh, that's uh, good. 
Uh, then we're also going to be, uh, uh, we have uh, Gary Wiegert, who is a uh, St. Louis City police officer and a Tea Party activist. Uh, now there's been some controversy surrounding his work with us, but nonetheless, he's, uh, we're using him to you know, solicit support from Republicans. Uh, and we're also, a lot of uh, our people here, myself included, are very, very well networked in the uh, Liberty Movement. Uh, a lot of people who are Ron Paul supporters and are now very active in the Missouri Republican Party. Uh, and so there's a lot of Republican committee men that are uh, coming out and we're, we're circulating, starting to circulate a statement saying, you know, we support the reform of these laws uh, and soliciting support from people in uh, that help hold offices within the Republican Party. Mm, that's great news. So buoyed by these uh, poll numbers, are you looking to the 2014 election for an initiative, 2016, or is this working within the legislature? Well, 2014, we would, we would love to have an initiative in 2014, but the, the numbers, even though we do have a majority support according to the poll, uh, as, you, as you're probably well aware, uh, the numbers typically... You know, you want to start out with more than 50% support for something uh, when you're going to do an initiative, because typically uh, your support falls away a little bit as the actual election approaches. People typically get cold feet. Uh, now, that, one thing that's interesting to point out, though, is that did not happen in 2012. Uh, in uh, Colorado and Washington, they both outperformed the polls by just a little bit, mm -hmm. and Oregon outperformed the polls by about five points. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not expected to be that close. Uh, and so if, uh, if, if, if that holds, then we could possibly make it win in 2014, but all the rest of the history suggests that uh, it, you're, you're going to lose support as Election Day nears. But 2016 is more likely uh, for, uh, for our next initiative. Uh, but right now we are working through the legislature to try and pass some, uh, some you know, uh, incremental reforms. They're not uh, by any means where we want to stop, but, you know, something like a statewide decriminalization measure, maybe a medical measure, those would be things that we would definitely like to see happen and might happen through the legislature, legislative process between now and 2016. How much are the legislators in Missouri looking to Washington and Colorado, and do you worry that bad after effects in Washington and Colorado might you know, affect chances for 2014 or 2016? I mean that's that's certainly a, a possibility, but uh, I'm I'm pretty confident that uh, that Colorado and Washington are going to be success stories on on the whole. Uh, but uh, and also the legislators here in Missouri, they don't really they're not actively looking at uh, Colorado and Washington. Certainly, if uh, they become big news stories and something happens out there, they'll look to that. But uh, mostly, you know, they, they they're pretty focused on their home home districts. I've actually had some conversations with legislators who say, well, I can't support this right now, but at least publicly, I kind of agree with you, but my, my constituents just aren't there yet, which, I mean, our poll suggests that they are, uh, but they, they, I've been told, no, that your poll was wrong. Uh, I think there's a real disconnect between people who are afraid to speak out to their legislators about it and their legislators are afraid to speak out because they think their constituents are going to kill them for it. So uh, there's there's a big confusion about who really supports what. <laughs> yeah, I th it sounds to me like uh, the constituents, the people listening in Missouri, just need to call their representatives and say, I'm not voting for you unless you support this issue. Uh, get get it through their heads. They could lose their jobs over this. Absolutely. Uh, if, uh, if representatives start hearing that from their constituents, then they're going to change their A lot of them will change their tune. I mean, there's some out there that we're never going to going to change, no matter how many constituents they talk to. Uh, but you know, if uh, if you have a guy who's kind of on the fence and who thinks it's a good idea, but is just afraid because he thinks that his constituents don't back that, uh, then getting some constituents out there to talk to him that'll change his mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also wanted to talk a little about St. Louis. I was reading something about the aldermen there voting for a municipal sort of decrim measure. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we had a vote uh, just this Monday morning, uh, and it went 22 to 3. Wow. Uh, it would have been 24 to 3 had, it, had two uh, of uh, aldermen in favor been present for the vote. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's a massive uh, massive show of support for uh, decriminalization in the city of St. Louis. And that's, I, I live in the city of St. Louis, so it's something I had a, had a personal stake in and worked quite a bit on. And uh, now I will say that the, the news outlet that first uh, got it wrong 
because they said that it still uh, it still allowed for 90 days in jail. And there was an earlier version of the bill that had said that, but we actually worked with uh, Alderman Shane Cohn, who uh, is introduced the bill, and the Health and Human Services Committee to take that part out of there. So uh-huh. now, uh, if, uh, if you're in possession of under 35 grams of marijuana, then uh, it's just a, it probably just a ticket and uh, a fine of $100 uh, and probably a suspended imposition of sentence, which that does not count as a conviction. And so there's no criminal criminal record on your on your public record. So that's uh, that's important there. Well, that's fantastic, and I thank you for the uh, update on that. We did report that story uh, a day or two ago, and and mentioned the possible 90 day sentence, but but now no possibility of jail for this uh, this St. Louis ordinance. That is correct. That is good news. Now I was also reading in it, and maybe you can clarify this. Uh, the news had said that that what would cons- be considered a small amount would be up to police officer discretion. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, and that was sort of a, a, a contentious point because uh, the... So in state law, there's a distinction between uh, 35 grams and under, uh, or under 35 grams and anything more than that. Uh, and that's the distinction between, uh, according to Missouri state law, a misdemeanor and a felony. Uh, so technically this does apply to anything under 35 grams, but they're not... You know, they didn't know if the officer would be able to uh, say exactly how much it was. Now, I, I honestly don't think at this point that that's going to be a big problem in the city of St. Louis because, in actuality, the police department has kind of led on this issue. St. Louis, as you might know, is not exactly the safest city in the United States. Uh, there's a fair amount of violent crime there, and the, the police officers in St. Louis... Uh, every single one of them that I've ever talked to one-on-one have told me, yeah, we should legalize this. We don't want to deal with it. It's not something we want to want to mess with. It just wastes our time when there's actual criminals out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, do, I don't worry about, uh, you know, there may be one or two cops out there in St. Louis that are going to try to really enforce that and use, uh, use their discretion in the wrong way. But uh, th- this is... I don't. I don't think it's going to be a, a big problem uh, in in St. Louis. There are other cities uh, in Missouri uh, that I would worry about after the officers having that kind of discretion, but St. Louis is not one of them. Okay. Well, that sounds like good news to us. John Payne from Show Me Cannabis Regulation. Anything else you need to tell us? Update us on the Show Me State. Uh, nothing really, except for uh, if you're in Missouri, uh, specifically if you're in the St. Louis area. We are having a 420 celebration this Saturday uh, down at the Handlebar on Manchester Avenue in the Grove. So okay. uh, it starts around 6 o'clock and runs all night. So if you want to come down and show your support, please do. And if people want more information, your websites and Facebook addresses? Yeah, it's uh, www.showmecannabis.com. Uh, you can also join our mobile campaign by texting SMC for Show Me Cannabis to 42420. SMC to 42420, and that'll join the mobile campaign, get you uh, the, the email campaign, they'll get an email or something? Yeah, you'll get an email, and uh, you'll also eventually be asked uh, to enter your uh, enter your zip code so we can connect you to your legislators to do exactly what we were talking about a little while ago and uh, contact your contact your legislator, give them a call, and tell them uh, you know, how you feel about this issue. All right, SMC to 42420 if you're in Missouri and want to help Show Me Cannabis get it legalized in the Show Me State. John Payne, thanks so much for joining us. Great news on that poll, and uh, good luck on everything you're doing there in Missouri. Thank you, Ralph. Have a good one. All right. Hey, folks, that's just about all the time we got here at uh, Hour 1. And coming up in Hour 2, joined by our good friend Brian the Red. And we'll talk a little bit about tonight's Red Eyes Reggae Flashback taking place at 8 p.m. Pacific, live right here from Roller J Studios. If you want to get the real roots, reggae rhythms, this is the place to be. And uh, coming up next, we have got, um, what do we have next? Oh, yeah, Token Talk Radio. And then 3 o'clock, excuse me. <laughs> uh, 3 o'clock, we've got a, I think we're going to replay the Big Daddy Fink uh, Funky Roller Rink Sample My Funk Volume 3. You, you mean 5 o'clock? At 5 o'clock. <laughs> 3, sir. 5, 3, yes. Hey, that's all the time we got for Brian the Red. I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. 
The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down to Summer, summer, summer time, 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 summer time, summer, summer, summer time. I can't